Well, it appears that the resistance is working. Uh, Southwest has now backed off of their uh, harsh vaccine mandate. They haven't backed off entirely, but they've, um, I guess they've called a, a, a an armistice perhaps, uh, or a, uh, a respite, because they're not going to be putting uh, their employees who are awaiting um, their exemption applications uh, for the vaccine mandate on unpaid leave. If you filed an exemption, you said, hey, I have a religious or a medical exemption, which really any um, the religious exemption is, for, you know, for those of you who don't know, the, the, the way that religion, freedom of religion works in the United States, um, you can't be told, you know, what is and is not religion. If you assert that a certain belief to you is religious in nature, that's good enough as far as the First Amendment is concerned and anti-discrimination law um, uh, tends to you know, support people uh, getting religious accommodation. And so if uh, Southwest is saying, hey, you know, you're entitled to a religious exemption, we're going to offer that to you, that's a pretty much a guarantee that you can get out of taking the shot if, uh, you know, if you assert that. And so the way Southwest was going to get around that is they were going to put people on unpaid leave um, pending uh, the approval of their, uh, of their exemption. And that exemption, who knows how long it would take Southwest to approve it. They might never approve it. They might just leave it pending forever. And so come December, I believe, these folks were going to be pretty much out of a job. Because uh, if you're not getting paid to work, then you need to go find another job. And so Southwest has now backed off. Uh, which is very encouraging because Southwest has been the uh, on on the receiving end of the strongest resistance that we've seen so far uh, to vaccine mandates. So this suggests this is the, they are perhaps the first domino to fall. They've had to reverse uh, in the face of opposition from their employees uh, the mandates. And so this should give us hope that in other contexts where people are resisting all around the world, um, but especially here in America. Uh, you know, like we look up in uh, Chicago, uh, the police seem to, uh, oddly enough, the Chicago PD, PD are putting up the greatest resistance <laughs> to government tyranny at this point, which is, I, I, I can't help but chuckle when I hear myself say that. The Chicago PD has been the tip of the spear uh, in one of the most unfree cities uh, in America for decades. And so it's pretty funny to look at them as like, hey, you know, they're put, they're drawing a line in the sand and they're saying to the government, no, so far and no further, you know, you're not going to stick your needle in our arms. Uh, and, you know, hey, even though I'm usually not on their side, I can applaud them in this case. Thank you, Chicago PD. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, also the firefighters are putting up a good fight, apparently. A lot of them are unvaccinated or refusing to, to, to say what their status is. And even if you are vaccinated, um, you know, you might, out of principle, not want to declare that uh, to the city and say that's none of your business. You know, I, not even necessarily in solidarity with the unvaccinated people, but just saying it's none of the city's business. Uh, you know, what I, uh, what my medical records are, and losing having a bunch of police officers, you know, not show up for work because, you know, they're not allowed to work because they're unvaccinated potentially up to, you know, one third of the police force, that will be very much noticeable, just like it's noticeable when uh, a bunch of airline workers don't show up and they have to cancel half their flights uh, as an airline. If Chicago descends even, you know, deeper into chaos than it already is, because, you know, Chicago has been a very unstable uh, and fiery uh, city for as long as I can remember, um, I think that the, the city uh, will at some point soon have to renege on this mandate if they just can't get enough cops to show up who are going to take the shot. And so the more that we see this uh, people gain success in resisting these mandates, the more willing people will become to resisting the mandates. Because the way that you get people to submit is you make them hopeless. You make them feel like there's nothing they can do, that they have no option, and so therefore they have to just listen and do what you say. But when they see people defy the authorities, and go against that, uh, then you can have things shift very quickly in the other direction. You know, government uh, and authority, you know, just authority in general, uh, they, they wear a glass mask. And once that mask breaks, 
what you you know once it slips and it shatters into a million pieces it's very hard uh, for uh, the their subjects to view them in the same way ever again you know that's why it's a glass mask when you break it you can't put those pieces back together and so now is the time for people to be hopeful um, we are seeing that resistance is working and this is true for any uh, state you know policy if people don't go along with it you know the state has no power the only the state's only power um, comes from obedience uh, if people obey the state well then the state can you know tell people to do uh, can make people do whatever they want but to the extent that people do not obey the state uh, then the state has no power you know there aren't enough I mean even the police <laughs> if, if the police aren't even on your side you're really screwed if you're the state I mean, we've been seeing uh, good signs of resistance out of the state of Washington. Apparently, Seattle police uh, were flying Gatston flags from their cars, uh, which I'm sure that's terrifying to the libs in Seattle, going, oh my gosh, there's that white supremacist flag being flown by the police. Oh my gosh, they clearly are unvaccinated. And there was some viral uh, video, I think, of a... Uh, uh, Washington State Trooper, I believe, uh, that's been going around getting lots of attention. Uh, the coach of the Washington State football team, not to be confused with the Washington football team, formerly known as the Redskins, but lots and lots of people getting a lot of attention uh, for standing up to these mandates. And it's good that we're seeing the government employees resist because the hammer is going to come down on the government employees first because it's easier for the state to control them. They have direct um, supervision over them. Now, the corporate overlords also, you know, are very much of a like mind uh, with respect to how the state views their employees and vaccinations. You know, the, the CEO of JetBlue, he was eager to mandate vaccines, and he was using, you know, every uh, uh, every ounce of ammunition provided to him by Joe Biden, saying, oh, well, see, Biden, he, he forced my hand. I had to do it. There's no way for me to resist Joe Biden. You know, he's he said he's going to issue an executive order someday. Uh, really? No, honest. He, he said that. And so, you know, there is a, uh, a bit of a um, it's an indirect control that somebody, uh, you know, in the White House has over the employees of Southwest. Yes, they have a lot of influence, but it's not direct control. You can still have situations like this where the Southwest uh, CEO is forced to reverse his position because, you know, there's so much resistance from his employees. But uh, even if the government doesn't want him to do that. But the government, uh, you know, governors of these various states, the president of the United States, they can impose their will and say, you know what, I don't, I don't care no matter how much protest you put up, I'm going to stand my ground. Because governments don't have to worry about making money. They don't have to worry about if, um, uh, if their employees shut down their production, well, then that's just a, you know, that's a pain for taxpayers. But the politicians don't, you know, they're not really affected by that. They still get their salary because taxes still get collected. Uh, whether the police show up for work or not. Whereas if Southwest Airlines has to, uh, you know, has to be running at half capacity and they're canceling all these flights, the company's losing a lot of money. The CEO might lose his job uh, and, you know, his cushy uh, existence. Maybe he'd have to sell one or two of his mansions in the Hamptons. So that's currently where things stand. Um, if you gain anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this. Um, and with that said, I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.